Good morning everyone, hi, hello, my name is CJ and I am back again with another narrated art time lapse for us to take a look at and hopefully learn a thing or two from. Uh, this time around we're going to be talking about my entry for last year's Adam Hogg challenge which the Adam Hogg challenge prompt from last year was under strange sun so basically uh the challenge kind of denotes this whole alien planet uh expedition of some sort uh that was basically the idea uh behind the whole competition and whatnot and so yeah it's it <laughs> it was a really fun challenge i'm not gonna lie i really really love my entry for that particular challenge uh it's probably one of my favorite ones that I've done so far for Atom Hog. I take it back. Uh, the year previously before that, uh, Forgotten Creation was an amazing uh, challenge too for me. My entry for that particular challenge, I absolutely, absolutely love. So yeah, um, last last year and last year are probably two of my favorite Atom Hog challenge I've done so far. So yeah, but anyways. Uh, let's talk real quick about what's going on in the screen right now um, because there's going to be quite a few things that uh, will transpire in the next few minutes and stuff that had already transpired so I figured um, it's time for me to talk about those things real quick uh, just to kind of get us up to speed as to what was going on so uh, the very first few minutes slash seconds uh, that we saw I was doing my initial warm-up sketches trying to get ideas on what is on the inspiration uh, trying to come up with something and uh, yeah just basically just trying to come up with an idea for the illustration and uh, my illustration quite honestly is very very heavily influenced by this one particular steel frame from the show uh, Lost in Space, the Netflix reboot, not the original one. Uh, there was this one particular image of Mina Sadwal. I think that's how we pronounce the actress's name. There was this one particular uh, steel frame of her uh, looking distraught of some sort. It was like a close-up pic of her character. She was in her astronaut space uniform um, or suit right and she was looking up at something she kind of looks distraught she kind of has this uh look on her face and i thought the still frame was very very dramatic uh so when i was doing initial research on the spacesuit right um yeah i ended up finding her <laughs> or i ended up finding that still frame uh as one of the images that kind of inspired me um the other set of images that really inspired me too was the outfit of um why can i not think of his name now uh he's such a famous actor uh the guy that was in the martian um okay now i feel like i have to look him up and take a pause and google the martian um but the outfit in the martian um I was heavily heavily influenced by the design of that um, Matt Damon why can't why did I forget Matt Damon's name anyways uh, there was an image of Matt Damon as well that inspired me so those were the two images that kind of inspired me to come up with my idea um, sorry <laughs> a little technical difficulties um, but as for composition um, I guess I could talk about the my inspiration for this whole uh, illustration later um, <laughs> got sidetracked but anyways I got heavily influenced by those two images uh, images of Matt Damon images of Matt Minutes on wall and their outfits for their respective space shows right and so I got really sold on this whole idea of this girl drawing this girl looking out at a distance um, we can see her right now uh, my sketches of it 
so basically i basically just had this astronaut character and she's in some form of uh foreign planet and that's very much indicated by why but what is but what is going on behind her um so yeah but anyways i'm gonna go into full detail about the ideas for the composition later let's talk real quick again about what was going on before i get sidetracked some more so first i did some sketches warm-up sketches i have no clue no idea what i was gonna do I was just coming up some with some random things i knew that i was gonna have an astronaut in there and so i started sketching out astronaut spacesuit those kind of things and then after doing all the sketches then I started looking at images on the internet to further inspire me to get more ideas. And that's when I ended up running into Minnie Sunwell's image, that particular image. And that's when I realized, you know what, composition wise, I could recreate that, right? And then have something behind the character um, that's juxtaposed onto the sky of this foreign planet. Um, and of course, what's going to be on the sky is something that kind of indicate that they're in a foreign planet, um, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, so you can see that I'm drawing this really funky looking stellar shapes. Um, and so I thought, hey, they kind of look like strange suns. And so when I saw the image of Minna Sandwall, that particular still frame image, from lost in space right i knew that i could put something in the background um that wasn't similar to what the background was in lost in space still frame i knew that i could put something behind the character right they kind of indicate like really really strange suns not your typical star not your typical stellar object so whatever stellar object that i put in the background i knew that i wanted some funky looking shapes and that's what i did um which we just went over just a few minutes ago i did a real quick sketch of it and just left it as loose as that um i'll go more about that later so as soon as i figured out what i was going to do composition wise i fired up um the human generator on blender because i knew that i really wanted to get a good lighting right so i created a character lit that character up the way i wanted that character to be lit and it's pretty much similar to that minutes on wall image from lost in the city lost in space uh not gonna lie it's like same pose same kind of lighting conditions kind of the minute sun wall photo is like nighttime mine is daytime but like the light source and the shadow casting is like pretty much similar so i pretty much just recreated that image reference with my human generator uh rig and then as soon as i had that lit i knew that i was going to use that image as my reference for lighting now originally i was going to use the character for my actual composition itself but then after that i decided you know what i think i want to do more sketches right and so i went back and did some more sketches and this is how i came up with this particular girl you know i was just messing around i was just you know sketching a character and i particularly liked this one that i came up with i thought she was kind of cute i thought she was pretty she's not exactly like the girl from the human generator neither does she look like me in a sandwall maybe it's a cross between them two i don't know but i just thought that this was cute and so i ended up thinking you know what i'm just gonna go with this sketch so i use that sketch plus all the other um initial sketches that i have of the suit um you saw me lay them all on top of each other to kind of come up with some form of idea of what the suit was going to look like and then after that i went back and did a really good line sketch on top of all of those just to kind of really denote where everything is um design wise uh again this is where matt damon's uh, astronaut suit design heavily influenced me a lot of the patterns that you see like on her arms and on the side uh of her torso that was just pretty much straight up lifted from 
Matt Damon's outfit <laughs> in the Martian movie. Uh, so yeah, I was heavily influenced by those two outfits. The only thing original, sort of, that I came up with, um, I mean, it's not really original, but I, I have this obsession with Rococo design slash Baroque design, you know, so like the floral arrangements, like on on her outfit, on her spacesuit. I've always been obsessed with that. I've I've implemented those designs a few times in some of my character designs. Not heavily. Uh, I've been meaning to explore that this motif some more, but I just never do. It just pops up in my work every now and then. Um, there was this one particular robot that I decorated or designed, and it has the Baroque Rococo uh, motif on it. I thought it was really really cool and again like I said I wanted to explore it some more but I never did um, there's this, this one uh, Final Fantasy game that was very very heavy on the Baroque Rococo design um, I don't know if everyone remembered Final Fantasy 13 the machines on that particular game video game has a lot of Baroque Rococo design so that was like part of my inspiration for having this visual idea of combining baroque rococo design with very sci-fi elements my other inspiration too is you know armor from medieval times um uh, you know like soldier armor um that is uh part of my inspiration as well uh they have a lot of uh, floral Baroque Rococo design of sorts on, on the armor. And so, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to implement that on on the astronaut suit. Um, so, um, yeah, <laughs> I really wanted to do it a lot more. Like, I really wanted it to be, like, enveloping around her body, all those floral designs. But I didn't want it to go too crazy either, you know. And so... I ended up with just like this simple floor delete. I think that's the name of like that particular uh, floral arrangement. I came up with that floor delete in the middle of her chest and then this floral design on the side of her arm. I eventually ended up switching it for something else just because that particular one that I first came up with is, it looks a little too garish. And quite frankly, it looks very, very precarious. Like it's gonna break off from from her shoulder pads. So I decided to just change that design altogether for something else completely different. Um, so yeah, uh, it was a last minute inspiration too. I mean, I didn't really change it until like the very, very end. So yeah. But anyways, yeah, uh, so when I was like sketching it out and coming up with the line sketch, I, I knew I had all these elements in, in my head that I wanted to implement. And so I basically implemented it in my clean line sketch. And then after having that clean line sketch, I started my coloring phase, which my coloring is haphazard. And I mean for it to be haphazard because I didn't want it to be just all kind of like plain color. You know, I really wanted like a variety of color so that when I smudge it, which is this thing that I typically do, right? I just quickly color the scene and then, you know, I check the values. Really, that's the most important thing, thing ugh, most important thing that I do during my coloring process is just check the values because I really want a differentiation in the values. As soon as the values test out right and looks correct and whatnot, I put them all in one layer, smudge them so I could get this base layer that I do my detailing on. Um, so yeah, that is what we've seen so far in the past 15 minutes. Right now I'm in my detailing process. You can see that I'm working on armor. And then now I'm working on her face, uh, going back and slowly detailing it. Um, basically cleaning up all that soupy mess that I created in my initial coloring phase. Uh, at this point, I just color pick straight from the canvas and then mix and blend with the other colors. And I just go back and forth, slowly forming the image. So yeah. I don't know why but I, I this character looks so cute i don't know why i'm so attracted to her but i am it's, it's just funny uh so yeah funny little tidbit uh some 
artists do fall for their characters you know i i'm not very good with females i'm not gonna lie there's times where i draw females and i'm just like oh man this female is just yeah <laughs> not looking good but for this particular one i i thought that i executed her very very well so i, I thought she's really pretty so yeah anyways what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna take a look at me detailing this piece uh so we're just gonna enjoy the show for a little while with some music and then i'm gonna come back later on to talk some more about my final impressions and my overall critique of this piece <music> so we are getting close to this video uh, being almost done so i'm gonna go ahead and just give me or give my critique of this illustration <laughs> and how i feel about 
uh, with this illustration overall. Uh, I really like this illustration because it was simple. Uh, the whole thing that I was trying to mention earlier that I didn't want to go over because I, I was really wanted to talk more about what the process was in the video uh, versus my own thoughts about the video. I, I knew that when I saw that Mina Sandwall photo, I knew that I have a very simple composition that I knew was going to be effective. My use of negative space behind that character, I think, is probably the, the most successful part of the illustration. Just because of the fact that I fulfilled the prompt uh, succinctly with a background that was quickly done. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the video, I spent like what? maybe 10 minutes 20 minutes at most uh on the background in real time right that's what i spent obviously we just saw it for just like a minute in this video but in real life i think i might have spent just 20 minutes on that background and i knew that that's what i wanted i knew that i just wanted this pretty much blank composition for the most part oh, plenty of negative space a few items in the background that denotes the idea that we're in a foreign planet under strange suns and you can clearly tell those stellar objects in that sky is not your typical or typical star they're shaped very very differently the only thing that kind of looks similar to what we could see in real life is the the horizontal not so much as a horizontal line but the diagonal lines that i created those diagonal lines are kind of inspired by the solar rings or the rings that you would see on jupiter or saturn uh, if you live on saturn or if you live in jupiter uh, you will see the rings kind of cut across the sky the way i did it on this particular image so i knew that Whatever planet this girl's going to be on has some form of ring around the planet. And that's pretty much what that those those lines are, the diagonal lines in the background. Um, as for the two other objects that are also floating in space, clearly they're not clearly they're they're glowing which means they're kind of like a star source or a source of light of some sort but they're not shaped like suns so they could be man-made or maybe they're natural objects and they're just shaped like that um either way that's i i that's what i saw in my head when i saw that image of minna sunball and i knew that that's what i wanted to do so yeah I think the reason why I love this piece the most is because I had fulfilled the prompt very easily, very succinctly with a very, very simple background. And I basically just needed to balance the image with a character that I fully detailed. I mean, you could see that I spent 99% of the time on this character just making her look pretty. Um, but really all she is is just a balance to what is going on in the background so yeah i absolutely thought that this was amazing and that this was awesome <laughs> so yeah I, I i love the simplicity of this illustration and how well it came together but anyways this illustration video time lapse is almost done i am so grateful for you guys watching it with me i will catch you guys in the next video good night